morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Uh, this is the first ever uh, Midman Manga Academy class. My name is Muzi Sensei, as you all already know. And uh, yeah, I'll be your lecturer today. I'll just let this play in the background, slideshow. So anyway, so I'm Muzi Sensei, and this is my manga that I'm currently working on called Mirror. In the past, I've done multiple mangas called Hide, Wind, um, The Red Thunder Prince, and what was the last one? The Sundered Kingdoms. So now I'm working on this one, which is, I think it's one of my best work, well, it is my best work currently. And I'll be working on chapter two this year. So, what we're gonna learn today is basically we're gonna learn basic character design. Before we all jump into like backgrounds you know, other things and, you know, storytelling and stuff, all that, yeah. Today we're just learning basic character designs so that for the next class, we're gonna learn how to put those characters inside a comic page, you know, making them move, you know, different expressions and all that, and talking about, you know, paneling and camera angles and so on. But today, yeah, as I said, just uh, character designs. But before we start, maybe I'll pass these around and a little bit of uh, inspiration. Before we start anything, I want all of you guys to basically draw something for me without the knowledge I'm gonna give you, you know? So, right, you can pass these around. Take a look, pass them around. So, before I teach you anything, I wanna see what level y'all are, right? So, I wanna see what y'all can do, and you're gonna come up here and you're gonna share with us your main character and uh, what's your story about and what's your overall goal, what's your career that you wanna pursue in this art form, you know? So, yeah, let's get started. Underneath, which is good. Some pros don't use them. I use them. If you look at that, I use them. Some of us just have to use them, you know. But anyway, it's always good to use them when you're starting off. If we look at my style of drawing, what anime or manga just just comes to your mind immediately? When you look, it's Bleach and Fairy Tail. Fairy Tail, great, great, great. I love Fairy Tail and. That's it. Um, well, the first frame reminds me of Yu-Gi-Oh for some reason. The dude's hair. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, some Yu-Gi-Oh action. Mm. All right. Well, basically, what you can, what I want to say about style is that basically, to create your own style, you need to be borrowing a few ideas from others. You know, it just doesn't come out of nowhere. You know, so mine, I'd say. A lot from Dragon Ball Z. I mean, if you look at their anatomy, a lot of these dudes are just insanely buff. You know, even as kids, they are rather buff. I mean, yes. yeah. I mean, this guy is 17 and he's really buff. You know, a little bit of fairy tale. I bar so basically, I borrowed some Dragon Ball Z anatomy, some fairy tale um, facial features, but then I mixed in the shading with bleach, right? The shading, some bleach action. And then if we have to add anything else, if you read Fairy Tale or Naruto especially, battle damage is somewhat like this. You know. So it's somewhat like that. Also the DBZ battle damage. I haven't really read the manga that much, but it's also similar. But Naruto, you know, stems from the DBZ. So yeah. I mean look at that. A 17 year old is buff, it's crazy. I mean look at Trunks as a child. You know, and he's like eight years old. He's really ripped. It's crazy, you know. 
So basically, styles about borrowing uh, from other people to create your own thing. So we all have to know what exactly, which anime or which cartoon do you like the most, in which you can, you know, borrow it and put it in your own thing to create something new. You know, um, I mean sometimes, like coloring wise, coloring wise is, you know, is very very difficult. Let's go back to the beginning. Ah, a lot of pages, guys. A lot of pages. Coloring wise, see, I borrowed this coloring style from a manga nobody's ever heard of called Ready, but it doesn't matter because most uh, manga, when they color it in, it's just saying, hey, there's the color, it's all up. It's black and white anyways. So you don't have to go all out on colors because you mostly use it um, for covers, but some people like to color in like the entire you know, chapter. It's up to you. So coloring style is not that important. What's important is to know that the characters have this kind of color scheme. And that's pretty much it. So for now, y'all can just have it in your head that, hey, this is my favorite cartoon, this is my favorite manga. I know what I'm about to draw next. I have to resemble a few of those things to create something new. And it's always best to create something people are familiar with so that, you know, when they see your work, they'll be like, this reminds me of. So they don't feel, you know, it's like, oh, this is new. I don't want to try it, but if it sucks, something. And then this part, this, which is as well the mandible, I think, um, is the second part. You see, this jawline, though, is not a manga kind of jaw. This would be a, an American comics kind of jaw, you know. And see where the eyes are. And we do this, but those are a tad too high up, so I'm going to lie a little bit. Because you don't want this, this space here to be too big. You know, because you don't want to make the eyes like gigantic. I know manga sometimes has big eyes, but these days that style has died down. So you can make, you know, this line here. We want to uh, side view, because I know a lot of people really struggle to draw characters, you know, uh, side view. So it's the same thing basically. You're gonna draw the first part of the head, you know, circle. Just now I'm tracing this skull, that's why it kind of looks like an oval. But you know, when it's simplified, I usually just use a circle and do that, but anyway. And then, once you do that, come to the second part, number two. And then, you know what it is. Number three is the eye line right here. It's the same thing. One, two, number three. And then the neck usually comes from there. It's just a foam. But okay, if I remove this layer, uh, and see what we have. This is what we have. Basically. So now, I basically said draw a line in between because, you know, so we can get half of each face. So we all know that the eye be here, the eye be there, and like the distance between the two is the size of your eye or the radius of the eye. So right now, I'm basically teaching you simplification. You know, it's not about knowing the core, uh, you know, skeleton itself because we're not drawing American comics. We're here to draw some regular show action, some cartoon action, some epic manga action. You know, you don't really need to know heavy duty stuff. This is not American comics. What we do is very simplified. So if I take this away, uh, this layer of skulls, okay, 
So now, I want y'all to do this. <clears throat> On that first one, you're just going to mark the fact that the shape of the eye. Guys, let's, let's quickly talk about this. Let's quickly talk about this. Shape. So you have to make a side note real quick. Right. So now in manga, right? Manga eyes. I may not do that. This. Usually we know that the manga eye is huge, but when you start drawing an eye from scratch, you usually start with the ball, right? So all of you draw a little ball. The iris. It's not even the iris. It's the whole, the whole thing. Is that called the iris? Yeah. The whole ball. Oh, the whole eye. Yeah, the, the whole, whole eye. Ball. Yeah. That's not the iris. I think it's the eyeball. It's the eyeball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the eyeball. Okay, so you all draw the eyeball, right? And then you draw the iris right it's gonna look like some booby action you know? <laughs> and then within the iris you draw the pupil you see and now that's the eyeball it doesn't matter whether it's American comics or not that is the eyeball full stop but with manga the shape oh crap uh, the shape of it one day the wall. Damn it. Okay, I can't do that. Uh, so then look, the shape of the manga eye is very, they are different, but the basic one is that you, gonna, the ball area, I wanna say, just look at this. Do it <laughs> as I fall. Okay. You see how manga eyes can be? They don't even cover. The eyeball. It looks like this is the eyeball. Now, yeah. this is not covered. You know, if you were drawing a real normal eye, you would draw the ball. Uh, iris, the pupil. And then what you do drawing the real ball is it would cut like that. You see? And then you put the eyebrow on top. So you all understand the difference, right? That the skin of, overlaps the eye. Yeah, it overlaps the eye. But in manga, it doesn't overlap the ball. So that's how it looks like. Hmm. That reminds me of the video. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of into properly added. Oh, okay. Yeah. So let's quickly make notes. Mm -hmm. uh, that this, I mean, get a different color. Blue action. It's a new layer. That this is the eyeball. That is the iris. That is the pupil. Can you spell pupil like that? Yes. Okay. Um, and then now to explain the difference between the two, main difference. Let's use orange. Difference between oops. between manga eye. And no, because the normal eye is American comics. It's anything but. Mm. Uh, the eye, the normal eye. That's a is um, the overlapping. Overlapping of skin. over the eyeball. 
Okay. And also normal eyes. Eyes are much smaller. See this shape, this part goes up, right? It doesn't have to always go up. You can make this part come down. You can extend this part to make it sharp, you see? Because what I did here uh, is I made it come down. I didn't make it go up, you see? So let's quickly make a different eye. See what I'm talking about. Now, as you see, I'm making it go up. You understand? And then the one I drew comes down. And then we can also get one like that just extends. But every extension, it does somewhat go up, but it's not a proper arch anymore. It's just like, you know diagonal kind of line you know and then you all know that hey you put the iris and then you put the pupil and then usually you put a light source yeah just like that okay we'll get that so for your first head have you all I don't know what shape of eye you can use it's up to you what style you want to do so go ahead put the shape of the eye put the eyes in completely right but let me quickly give you a quick secret that above the eye, you put this line here. Yeah, this line. I mean, most people make this thing super thick like that. You know, it's supposed to be subtle. Yeah. Because, I don't know what you can call it, but it's supposed to be subtle. It's the fold apart from of your Yeah, the fold. It's called the fold. Also here, it's sometimes, sometimes there, but they don't do it too often. Sometimes they too don't do it too often. Okay, if we look correctly, this is just the hole where the nose would be. But then now if you put some skin, the nose would somewhat do that. Starts from there, that's the bridge. Comes right down like that, right? So from this point, this is where the nose is gonna be. Alright, so let's make a quick little oops, dot action. Now, because I was following the scar, the nose looks too far out. So usually what I do especially, you just have to wing it. But if you were to measure your own, the distance between your eye to your nose, you know, you can somehow wing it in your head and put it down on the paper. So let me wing it here. Okay, now see, the nose is somewhat complicated, a little bit. <clears throat> because, you see, this, Okay, let me first see. Does this, is this a black person, white person, or Indian? Black. Yeah. Why do you say she's black? Oops. And you can see the tennis ball nose, right? It's not that big, but yeah. <laughs> Basically, you see, if we all using our own different style, there is no major rule to the nose. Because it could have been like two dots. For me, when I draw my manga, it's not even it's not really two dots, it's just like um, two little hooks going inside, you know, depending on what angle though. So, where's the front shot? Okay, Alvaraj is a black person. So, you see his nose has does look like a normal human nose. You know, it's just a tad sharp, you know. So, 
But if you learn the rules of the nose, you will come to find that the nose basically consists of one, right? We've got the bridge. And then we've got two nostrils here. Right? And it's supported by these two half tennis balls. That's what we're gonna, we're gonna call it. You know, typical term. We're gonna call that. Say that. And that's pretty much the nose. If you wanna draw it sideways, remember, bridge, even let's break it down here. Say, a strong 90 degrees kind of angle and then you bring it down like that this is a side view shot and you put in you know the, the, the mouth I mean if you look at this guy here same rules apply you see <clears throat> if you just go down straight some of the 90 degrees angle thing going on you know that the nostril starts around here I just didn't put that, that, you know, half tennis ball action. Like you don't have to. You never have to. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. So now, I mean, you honestly, I can say draw a nose like this. You know, because most anime is like that. It can be just that. It can be. It, it can even be some Julius Malema action. You know, can even be that. There are no rules to join the nose. The only thing you should know is just that there's some bridging action. You know, there's a bone here, right? Just know that and know that if you want to draw a proper nose, two half tennis balls on either side and that there are two nostrils. Because this again, just if I put a face right there, here's the mouth. looks like a human being well it looks like something that has a nose right so that's a quick thingy on the nose I, I won't pressure you guys to write anything on it it's really not a big deal to the mouth same thing you know same thing the mouth okay now when you're gonna draw proper proper lips let's say you want to draw a very hot chick you know that hot chicks have proper lips well they should you know don't want no paper lips up in here so now usually you look at the shape of it. We know that the ideal shape of lips is like that. Right. And then it's like that. But, break down, there's actually two circles here. Two circles here. And then two big circles here. Okay, so, this shape, this whole thing here, if you were to start drawing these two circles, you know, you've seen everybody's mouth, so come on. You know that it's gonna go up, it's gonna have a nice uh, curve because of the circle, it's gonna dip down, another curve because of the circle, it's gonna go down again, and then when it comes underneath, same thing, it's gonna go up because these circles are much bigger, pushing that one up. It's gonna come up like that, dip down, come up like that, dip down, well not insanely so, but it's gonna come up like that. And then same thing here, two big circles. You've seen everybody's mouth, it starts from here, nice arch. Usually some people's lips, they don't go inside. Like my lips kind of go inside. So usually when I draw my characters, I make sure this there's a, there's a line going inside. But sometimes they're nice and full. You know, it's up to you. 
but I like mine, you know, going inside, goes inside, curves, and goes up again, you know. The ideal here is that it's in the shape of a question, right? But then there isn't a line going straight down, creates the ear though, right? Now, if you look at my ear, I somewhat have an ideal ear. It's also the shape of Africa, so I'm into it. It's the biggest shape. But anyway, so that's the thing. The, the ideal one is like that. Now, you can always find reference for the different kind of ear or look at your own ear because that's a big ear like mine, you know. Otherwise, you can like make small ears like that. You see, it's a tad more. See here, it's just like, and then here, this part is much longer. It doesn't even, you know, bend at all. It's like that tad sharper and then it creates some more a question mark in there but then the inside of the ear the inside is you basically trace the same line on top okay trace the same line on top you stop there and then you continue again and stop there right and then you continue this part and draw, I don't know what they call this thing. Whatever it is, I'm no doctor, but whatever it's called. Do you know? Yeah, yeah. whatever it's called. So basically, when drawing the inside, you trace this underneath, or just redraw this line here. Stop right in the middle, and then continue again, stop right there, because this line doesn't exist on the ear though, right? Let me put an earring there, so y'all don't make a mistake. Now I'm drawing, it's not a girl. But anyway, so it's just like that. And then if we're gonna put more detail, we make a Y shape. A Y, like that. See what I did there? When you're drawing your Y, this is what I did. That, and then it goes down like that. It's a Y. See, I just didn't put the line there. Usually it goes like that, not like that, but everyone's different. So you could literally make it a Y and just don't draw the line extending here, you know. That's, you see, and there you have it, that's the ear. You can draw the little hole thing there, but you don't have to, you see. So if we look at my ears here, if we look at a close up, Okay, see, his ear is much sharper because he's a bad guy. Bad guys have sharper features. But this will be over on his ear. It's less sharp. Still sharp, but less sharp. It's still it's got the same ideal shape, the, the, the question mark, but not that much. As I said, you can play with the rules, right? And then in the inside, same thing. You see the Y action in there. But then, What's making it a tad different, I suppose, is because I put shading. And I put a little bit of, I think in the lines where the, the shadows are, you know, most common. You know, so like here, there's less light. So I thicken that line. You know, thicken that line, thicken that line. You know, but the wide thing is still there. And then I just added shading. Why I add shading in the ears especially? To create depth. You don't want just an ear floating in the sky, you know. Put shading in to create depth. Just write it down somewhere. Broad shoulders. Broad shoulders. These are going to be the key differences between male and female. Uh, also, sometimes in terms of the face, when draw, it depends on what style you you know you use. If it's American comics, the guys would have a square face and so on, but it's up to you. So. 
broad shoulders, square jaws. Um, and in terms of like their overall, I get it, depends on style. Their overall uh, muscular build, uh, let's say it's much, it's much rounder, you know, rounder features. But let's say bulkier, not rounder, bulky. Now, also right uh, at the bottom here, only applies. applies to strong male leads. Okay, because if you're drawing a teenager, there's no way in heck. Well, I made Alvarage like that. But then if you look at his face, you can see that he's young. He doesn't have a gigantic uh, freaking square jaw. He doesn't have any of that. So when you're drawing younger male uh, characters, Another side note there. Young males. Just wanna say softer. Start features. Because although Alvarage was buff, let me open it. Although Alvarage was buff, he did not look as complete and cut as this other guy. Where is this part? So look at him. He's buff, but he doesn't have a super gigantic, um, you know, square jaw, and he's got softer features. Which part of him can you say is actually like, oh, like some Superman action. Nothing's like standing out and ready to like jump at you. You know, he's young. You know, so softer features, regardless if like they have a lot of muscle or not. And then if we look at this guy here, he's an old guy. He's a black man, guys. Just forgot to shade him. Anyway, look at his jaw. See that? That's some heavy-duty uh, square action. Look at the size of his neck. This is a man. Everything is enhanced. You know, because Jax is buff too, but his neck is not on that level. You know, if we go here, he's not really, he doesn't have a super gigantic jaw starting from here. It's not there, you see. So, again, look at the size of that jaw, look at the neck, look at how big his traps are, his trapezius, and so on. Look at that, see? Just because a guy, it's making a guy younger, it's all about the jaw, guys. It's all about the jaw. Same with the female, we'll get to the female, but look how round her face is. Her chin is pretty much like an egg, or it's much sharper, but you know, it's along those lines. <coughs> uh, let's go back to here. But anyway, so young male, softer features, uh, no square jaw. And that's pretty much it. And obviously they're shorter. Obviously. Okay. Now when it comes to drawing the figure, uh, we know that some people start with the head. I start with the head. But right now, we're focusing on the body. So usually in American comics, they start drawing with the abdomen, right? So this is where, this is basically the chest, in my book. And you can separate it later to, to, to you, know, you know, create details and everything. But what am I talking about here? This is all about shape language. If you can create a shape that looks like the shape of an arm, you win. You know, like good silhouettes, you, then you know what this is like. You know video game characters, you can unlock that character and so on. You can see the silhouette that, hey, 
this looks like Sonic the Hedgehog, it probably is, so on and so on. So the shape of it. Some shoulder action. And Penny, you already know this. You see how I'm doing this is because I know where the muscles are and how they work. And I'll quickly show you guys a muscle diagram. And you see this area is very important, this pelvis area. Because <clears throat> for a female, if I was a female, this would be much larger. Can anybody tell me why females have bigger pelvises? To push out the baby. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so imagine a dude like, man, that just not look right. You know? <laughs> so guys have smaller pelvises, you can write that down. Uh, it's pretty sure a small pelvis. Isn't it supposed to be smaller relative to the shoulders? It's just smaller, period. It is smaller, period, and the shoulders are much. It's, it's kind of the same, but you know, it is smaller, period. I ain't going that far into the details. But anyway, let's break this down as well. If I remove this. basically the underwear line. Okay, basically if this is the entire chest area, you all know that now. So there are the instructions. One, two, two, three, four, five. Okay. Always start with this. It depends what pose you're doing. If it's if it's from the back and somebody's falling, usually you might want to start with that because how this is falling, you can determine where the head is and so on, then starting with the head and then making life difficult for yourself. Anyway, so when I usually draw, it's either with the head, right, but that doesn't count, so it's basically one, two, three, four, five, you know, and then I add like arms and legs later. So, y'all quickly do this, this uh, abdomen part. Just draw three of them, again. And let me quickly draw one sideways. When it's sideways, uh, number two falls apart. This falls away when it's sideways. But yeah, three of each. <clears throat> Let me get some water. Next time it'll be bigger and better and uh, hopefully I'll have chapter 2 ready to show you guys as you can see this is just a cover. So the big announcement I'd like to make is that we are, I'm not just training you guys who just draw for fun, you know, this is, this is something serious. So for any of you who are interested in pursuing this as an actual career, I have joined up with Color Corporation in which uh, I'll basically be training you, the artist, to draw for the corporation because it's a publishing group. You may come with your own stories or we may give you stories and you'll be drawing everything. So we're training you to have a fulfilling career in this comic book uh, industry. We can even take your skills even further if you you know want more classes on advanced levels. You can take it to American Comics 
it doesn't matter. But for those who want to stay here in Mzanzi, then you know that we got your back. Uh, just join the Color Corporation group and uh, we got you. We got you. Yeah.